This afternoon, our presentation is on who knows. Who knows what's the title of this Anxiety. presentation? Anxiety. So, we're going to talk a little bit about how to recognize and some possible treatments for anxiety. Before we start though, I'd like to kind of engage everybody just to get you a little feedback or your opinion on what you think anxiety is. What's anxiety, Nicole? Well, you've heard that word before, right? When a person say that they're anxious, have you ever heard anyone saying I'm anxious? you never heard that before? That's wonderful. <laughs> that means you guys are fine. <laughs> I'll That's tell you about anxiety. Yes, brother. Tell us a little bit about When this. my daughter was first driving, yes. and I don't think, uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how the situation went, but, but I was very anxious because I knew that she wasn't a very careful driver, and the insurance that we had would probably not cover any accident that she had. So I was pretty anxious. I was having a hard time sleeping at night. <laughs> and uh, thank God that everything went okay, but, but I was anxious. Yes. So Nicole, now you kind of have an understanding as to what anxiety is. To explain to us what you think about the journey. Let's try to see. Okay, that's fine. It's no problem. So who else wants to share their idea as to what anxiety is? Have you ever had an episode of anxiety? How did you live? Dígame la pregunta en español. ¿Alguna vez te has experimentado ansiedad? You can, you, you, can ask, you can ask my wife, she will know. Thank you, my husband. They're probably both going to be anxious at this. Ansiedad? Yes. 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 Lo que yo tengo ahorita. What I have right now. <laughs> Para saber qué va a pasar con mi hermano, como una. Because I am anxious to know what is going to happen with my brother. Sí, pero pero no es buena la ansiedad. But this is not good. Porque porque no solo estoy dejando, no le estamos dejando las cosas en las manos a Dios. Because we don't let the things in God's hand. Okay. Yeah. So any situation that puts you in an uncertain state. That can cause anxiety. So a lot of, however, a lot of people worry needlessly or are anxious needlessly. So when I think of anxiety, this is kind of like a picture that comes to my mind. It's like the person is really surrounded by darkness. Do you understand me? Yeah, yes. Okay. So this is really what comes to mind. Can I give you a, a definition in a nutshell? Oh, absolutely. Unresolved mm -hmm. inner conflict. Absolutely. Unresolved inner conflicts. Therefore, it goes without saying that any conflict that can be resolved should be resolved. If not, you're going to be in a persistent state of anxiety, which is not good. Our bodies were not created to be in this persistent state of anxiety. So either you're going to give it to Jesus, share it with somebody else who you can trust, and have that person pray with you. Because, which I did not really go into detail or to any depth in this presentation, but God designed us to be a little anxious. And I'll go into that a little bit. But persistent state of severe anxiety is not good. It is not good. It's like if you're in the traffic driving. Yes, go ahead. Yo pienso que el 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 ser humano. I think that human being. Siente más ansiedad. Feels more anxious. Cuando quiere uno resolver los mismos problemas. When we want to solve our problems ourselves. 
<coughs> pero si uno lo deja en las manos de Dios, But if we left in God's hands, no tiene que sufrir al cielo. We don't ha have to suffer and should Yes. Thank you very much, brother. Also, I think the best way to avoid being in an anxiety provoking situation is really, there are some situations we cannot avoid, but the situations that we can avoid, avoid them. Because when we place ourselves in that position, it becomes very, very difficult. And if it is not resolved, it can begin to have, phys we can begin to have physical symptoms. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. So, Okay, so this depicts a person who is probably anxious, but more than anxious. There is some depth, seems like some emotional anguish going on there with this young woman. And or she's in pain. Or she could be in pain. She could be in pain, physical in pain. pain, as well as emotional pain. Dolor. Mm -hmm. ¿Por qué me tuvo que pasar? So I got, got some feedback already about your perception of anxiety. And I, I like the way of Brother Jerry put it, any unresolved conflict can be to anxiety. But my question to you all this evening, is anxiety always bad? Is it always bad? Is the question? No. Is it always a bad thing to be anxious? Oh, I know a story <clears throat> about some kind of fish. Fish? Fish. I don't know exactly where in what part of the world that um, it's not easy to catch them. So uh, some people try to catch um, and catch them and put in the in the Stop. like a, no like a, a pool for artificial reproduction, but uh, they uh, the final result was that the fish. Uh, the, the taste was not the same like the fish in the sea. So uh, then uh, they realized that permanently this kind of fish permanently has a persecutor. Uh, other big fish was persecuted. So they realized that, that and then they catch the other fish too and put it inside the pool. So. This kind of persecution permanently give, uh, gave them like a, a, the, the, the test that the people was expecting about, about, about them. So um, maybe some kind of operation maybe would be good. Maybe. Um, maybe. It's, uh, uh, not the conclusion, right? <laughs> it's like uh, uh, some kind of operation maybe is, is, is a good thing for our, ourselves. To, to put out the best uh, in, in the table. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, brother. Question. Mm -hmm. Do we feel anxious when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin? That is the question. In that case, if we feel bad, we feel anxious when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. In that case, would that be a good? or that kind of anxiety, because there is young anxiety and there is also the bad one, and we're going to talk about both the different types of anxieties. Is that a question for me, or are you just... No, for answer? everybody. That way, it's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's positive to feel this kind of anxiety. Yes, we should feel anxious about our own sins. But the thing is, I think it would be better if we didn't, you know, 
the Bible says we sin when we think not. But there are deliberate things, preconceived sins that one can engage in. And the best way to avoid having to feel that um, sense of anxiety is not to, not to sin. To the best of our abilities, not to sin. Just a question. Maybe uh, can we confuse um, anxiety, anxiety mm -hmm. with stress? Um, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between stress and anxiety to me. Mm -hmm. In the sense that anxiety is something that could keep on perpetual, doesn't stop unless there is intervention. Stress is something that may just happen for the moment. For example, if you feel stressed because you have deadlines to meet, once those deadlines are met, then the stress comes off you. But you have some people who are just anxious in nature. So even when there is no reason for them to be anxious, they are still anxious. So I do believe that there is a difference between stress and anxiety. However, um, there are some people that they call them a type A personality. They, I don't know if I should call it stress, but they are very, um, how should I say Worried? it? Concerned? They feel that they must get the job done, and it's like they're always on this edge to Colour. get things finished. What is it? Choleric people, you say that? Maybe. Well, they're more than choleric, they're driven. Driven. They're very driven people. They're very sort of aggressive and yeah. pushy. Right. So there is a possibility, Brother Elder, that we could get the two terms mixed up, but they are different terms. Anxiety is a disorder. Stress is not a disorder. Stress is just responding to some variable, it's something. It's the situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, the thing, though, is with there are certain situations that will provoke anxiety. And these are situations which we as Christians should not go into, should avoid. Because like I said to Brother Jerry, it's better not to be in that situation so that you're not anxious than to put yourself in that situation and then you bring anxiety on yourself. You're pressing the wrong button. Okay. I'm pressing. Okay. Anxiety. So, um, anxious. anxiety isn't always okay. Let me get your feedback. I think I've asked a question before. Is it always bad? Is anxiety always a bad situation? Sister Marcella is saying no. no. Can you help us to understand why you're saying it's not always a bad situation? <clears throat> bueno, porque. A veces también uno tiene ansiedad de las cosas de Dios. You may be also anxious yes, for bueno. godly things, and that's good. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. We ought to, those are the things that we should be anxious over. How am I with God? What's my prayer life? What's my, am I engaging in missionary work the way I should be? So these are the anxieties which are good, and also for students who are in school. Be anxious about meeting your deadline so that you can meet your deadline on time. If you have no cares, no anxiety, do you think you're going to be driven to meet that deadline for your assignment or whether it's a speaking engagement or whatever? So there is a type of anxiety which is good. What happens is when you are anxious, your blood vessels constrict. That's what anxiety does. And when your blood vessels constrict, your heart pumps a little bit harder, and then you have more blood reaching your brain. Right? Your vessels constrict, and you have blood, more blood reaching your brain. Your brain. So under those conditions, you're better able to learn. But it should not be extreme anxiety. It shouldn't be. If it is too extreme, then it is going to lead to further problems like high blood pressure. It's the same principle, but it's not extreme. So this person by the name of Hans Selye, he coined this term, he called it general adaptation theory. And in that theory, he talks about um, the different hormones that the body produces in the presence of anxiety. 
So your body produces certain hormones, it's called, one of them is called adrenaline. You've heard of adrenaline, right? What adrenaline does, your, the, there's, there are two little glands above your kidneys, they're called the adrenal glands. They sit right on top of your kidneys. They produce um, adrenaline. And what adrenaline does is to prepare, it prepares people for flight or for fight. So, for example, if you hear, like if you're at home and you hear unusual sounds, right, you're either going to run away from the situation or you're going to stand up and deal with the situation. So you're going to find that your heart begins to beat fast, right, your pupils dilate, your lungs expand because that way you have more oxygen coming in, so you're better able to deal with the situation. So that's a good type of adrenaline that's coming in so you can deal with the situation. If someone pulls a gun on you, it's the same reaction you're going to get. Your heart is going to race, your pupils are going to get big, your lungs are going to expand, your bladder is going to close down, right? Because you cannot be trying to escape and your bladder is open, right? Because <laughs> I know my voice puts <laughs> people to sleep. <laughs> no sleep, I am thinking. Oh, okay. But my voice does put people to sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. He's not anxious about anything. <laughs> He's very relaxed. His, his pupils are not, you know, his heart is not pumping harder. Okay. He's on the opposite side. Or something. All right, That's very good. So I want you to remember this word. It's called adrenaline. You've heard of the adrenaline, right? Adrenalina. So what it does, it prepares people for flight, to run away, or to stand up and fight. The same adrenaline though, if you're in a persistent state of anxiety, of anxiousness, your body's going to keep on producing adrenaline because you're sending your body a message that, listen, I'm still concerned about the man that's there knocking on my door or is coming to rob me. I'm still concerned. And so your body is going to continue producing adrenaline because it thinks you're facing danger. If your body is in that persistent state of producing adrenaline, eventually it's going to have an effect on you. And I'll explain to you how. What adrenaline does, it constricts, it constricts your blood vessels. So if your blood vessels are supposed to be this open, when your blood vessels are this open and are dilated, your pressure stays normal. Mm -hmm. That's why we take blood pressure pills to open the vessels so the pressure goes down. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a dilation is the term we use. That's what most of the blood pressure pills do. Dilate the blood, the blood vessels so the heart doesn't have to pump that hard and it keeps the pressure down. People who are in that persistent state of anxiety, their blood vessels are constricted because adrenaline constricts the vessels so the heart can pump harder so you can run faster. But if there's nothing to run from, but you're in that state of anxiety. I have an experience. You do? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I was shy. I, I was shy. Maybe I, I was uh, like uh, 10 years old, maybe. And I had an accident in my 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 right um, and he was in I, my my mom told me okay please go to the the store where are the store. you store. Go, to the store. go to the store and please buy buy something I don't remember what was okay so I I went maybe a block like this uh, to my to, to to the store and it was painful my my my, my foot was was the 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 bones were, uh, were swollen. Uh, right. And then I was passing by in front of uh, um, my neighbor, and inside they, they had like a grill. Like a grill, like and a fence, little a fence, fence. Right, like a fence. So inside was a big dog. The dog, the name is <laughs> Nero. <laughs> Nero. Nero, right. <laughs> yeah, and I remember it was very, very. Uh, Bravo? Yeah. Very, very angry. Angry. Furious. Dog. Yeah, furious. Aggressive. Dog. Aggressive yes. dog. So I, I say, it's inside the fence, the problem. So I, I start to, to say, hey, no. 
Hello, come on. <laughs> I, I, I was I was bad in my my my, my foot. Um, suddenly the the door was open. I don't know how. <laughs> and when I saw the door open and this door was coming upon me, I start to run immediately. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot totally my pain in my, in my foot. I, I started to, 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 to run anyway, very, very fast. Then I, I stopped. The dog was, I don't know, I, I don't remember what, what happened with the dog. I, finally, uh, I was in the, in the store like, where is the dog? And then I realized, oh, my pain? <laughs> and then uh, I, I forgot to totally about my pain at that moment. Maybe this is the action for I don't know. That's exactly, that's a very, very good example. Yeah. Yeah. Very good, that's exactly what it does. <laughs> But, and that's a good situation because if you did not get that, that adrenaline rush, you would be able to take off like that. However, where there is no danger, if your body continues to produce adrenaline, it's going to cause your pressure to go up. That is why people have stress-related high blood pressure because they're in this persistent state of stress or anxiety, so the body produces these hormones which are not good under those conditions. Thank you, Brother Elder, for that. Um, that's a very good example. So, he developed this theory. It's called the General Adaptation Syndrome Theory, which states that your body produces under stress your, or, or threat, your body will produce these hormones that will prepare you to deal with these things. A person who is, has road rage, for example, and you get to this, you're, you're driving and the person ahead of you is not moving and you begin to, you know, build up this anger inside of you. The pressure is going up and there is no outlet. Mm -hmm. There is no outlet. So eventually people with road rage are going to suffer from high blood pressure. Rabia manejando. Por eso que, dígale hermano, por eso que cuando nosotros fuimos una vez a Orlando, once we went to Orlando, the city, and we went into the roller, roller coaster, and the guy there who worked there, who gave the tickets, if you're, good, if you're going to get on, you have to scream. Scream. If you don't scream, you could have a heart attack. <laughs> Some people freak out. And, and those who don't scream and just overstress could have a heart attack because of the whole situation. Exactly. We'll talk about that visit to that place rather later on. <laughs> it shouldn't be there, brother. Yes. Thank you also, brother Fernando. So, this is just a definition of anxiety. It's called. Um, Angst. Um, angst or worry, angst. and it's a psychological or physical state. Physiological. Physiological state. Thank you, brother Jerry. Characterized by somatic or emotional, cognitive, and behavioral components. So it could either be physical or it could be just something to do with your mind, right? So there's different components to anxiety. It is the displeasing feeling of fear or concern. And the root meaning of the word anxiety is to vex or to trouble in either the presence or absence of psychological state. Anxiety can create feelings of fear, worry, uneasiness, and dread. It should not be confused with fear. There's a difference between anxiety and fear. It is of a more dreaded feeling about something which appears intimidating and can overcome an individual. It's a normal reaction to a stressor, which we can go in later, because it's a normal reaction to a stressor, because let's say somebody calls you and says to you, you know, I have bad news for you. They didn't tell you what the news is, they just say, I have bad news for you. Aren't you going to be anxious until you hear what the news is? Okay. If you weren't, if you didn't feel anxious, then you would not have responded appropriately to something like that. Because it is a normal reaction to a stressor. If, for example, let's say you hear that 
a good friend of yours met in a car accident. If you didn't ex um, exhibit any feeling, would that be a normal reaction? No. Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> pero, pero a veces to, todos no reaccionamos igual. Not everyone reacts the same way. No, they may not outwardly show the reaction. Pero exteriormente no. They may not, and they might think that. Pero interiormente they... tampoco. Sí. Yo no reacciono así. It's true. Por, It's true. Por ejemplo, a mí cuando me llaman para darme una noticia, sea mala o sea buena. When people call me for a good or bad news. Yo estoy calmado. I am, I am always calm. Un día estaba yendo por la calle, así por la carretera. Once I was driving on the road. Entonces, este, por accidente. By accident. Lo topé a un carro. I, I kind of hit a car. Bueno, yo lo topé y me dio risa a mí. And then I laughed. Pero el señor del carro se bajó enojado. But then the man in the car wasn't laughing. He was really upset. Yes. Y se paró a mí y me gritó ahí, no sé qué me dijo, pero... <laughs> Si sí, usted todavía no tiene una situación lo suficientemente preocupante para. Hay gente que se alborota por nada. Sí. Eso sí. Eso sí. Eso sí. Eso sí. Eso sí. So now this is Nero. This is Nero, el emperor of Rome. No, not the dog. El Romano. The emperor. Yes. Look at the, he depicts. Ooh. I think he depicts anxiety. Este es mucho, Look at him. Mucho estrés. Yes. Mucha ansiedad tenía. Mucho estrés. So, what does the Bible say about anxiety? Should we be anxious, really? What do you think the Bible says? Do not be. Do not be anxious. God, Jesus Christ does not want us to be anxious. You know, no matter what the situation is, I know. What does the Bible say? What else does the Bible say about anxiety that we have? <laughs> it says that we should, well, humble ourselves therefore under God's mighty hand. That he may lift you up in due time, cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. He cares. Isn't it amazing to think <clears throat> that the God of this universe cares for us? Amen. What are Amen. we? What are we? Nothing. Made from the cheapest material there is. <laughs> Made from dirt. And the creator of this universe has that deep interest in us. He's even inviting us to put our cares on him. So if Jesus tells us to put our cares on him, is there any reason for us to be anxious? No. Absolutely not. not. No matter what the situation is, put it on Christ. Take it off yourself. I always say, I teach, you know, I, take, I teach students. And many times when I take them to the hospital, the nurses ask them to do things that is not within their scope. The nurses will ask them to do certain things like, oh, can, oh, can you go give this pill to this patient for me? Or oh, oh, can you do this for me? Can you do that? And the students feel bad because they don't know how to say no to the nurses. And sometimes, I've heard of students who overstep in their bounds that has never really happened with me and do things that they were not supposed to do. So at the end of the day when we have our little conference, they come to me and they report on things that happened there. And they'll tell me that the nurses want them to do things and they feel bad to say no. I say to them, you know what? Put it on me. I can deal with them. Put it on me. Tell them that your instructor says you should not do that. That way, it doesn't reflect on them and they don't have to feel bad. So, if Christ is saying to us, Christ. put it on me, cast your fears on me, why should we be anxious over the things? Things that we have no control over. We should not be anxious over those things because we have the king of the universe who is saying to us, put it on me. Don't 
again, what is Jesus, what is Jesus saying here? Who wants to what you're, what you're saying, sister? It's true. We need to cast everything upon God. When the disciples were in the boat with the master and he was sleeping, when they felt the storm and the winds, they wanted, they wanted, they, they, they were all uh, anxious. They wanted to figure things out on their own terms. And when they figured that they couldn't really do much, then they remember about the Master. That's what happened to us oftentimes. We want to fix all, all the problems on our own terms. And then, we, and then last we remember. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that example, Fernando. And you know, there are certain things, I'll say this, there are certain things that we can do for ourselves. Right? There are certain things that we can do for ourselves, but there are certain things that we cannot do. Things that we can do for ourselves, God doesn't want us to become invalids. He, want us, he wants us to develop. So in other words, you wouldn't say to God, well, God, I know I should not, let's say, drink certain things. I know it could make me sick, but I'm going to drink it anyway. Or please stop me, God, from drinking this. Stop me, do something, knock it over, and let someone come and take it from me. Is God going to do that? No, he's not no, going to no, do it no. for you. But situations that we find ourselves in, over which we have no control and which we cannot help ourselves, give it to Jesus, give it to him. It's no need for us to take on things that we cannot handle, just put it in the hands of Christ, and he'll handle it for us. Amen. No matter what it is. <coughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, kids, we never go into this uh, presentation that you're doing. But I, myself, personally, just like now in the midst of um, my uh, message, there are some things that I have to do. And um, one thing that I, I must do now is I have to go attend. I have to be out of um, Edmonton for a while, right? And I've been very uh, perplexed or troubled, you know, not, not anxious, but well, I think it probably was approaching that. And just this week, really, you know, this is something I've been having to deal with. But just this week, uh, I think it was day, two days ago, as I was reflecting on, you know, the difficulties of, of having to go away for a while, and it came to me the question that was asked, you know, in my mind was, who is, um, whose, whose business are you going to be ultimately attending to, right? Who brought you here, you know, with what you're doing now? I said, well, is it the law's work? And the answer was, yeah. And some of the things that you, when you go to attend the, 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 your, your immediate um, um, problem here, situation that you have to deal with, are you, and really, this was the, the question that came to me, are you going to be engaged in God's work? I said, yeah. And then some, some specific situation came to my mind. For example, um, this, this, this lady who I just spoke with is very ill. You know, that would be a short visit, really. But this is some of the questions that came to me. And a couple of the people um, that I need to, you know, I'm getting up in age and I need to visit. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if these people will even survive very long or anything like that. And my, but my answer to the question was, yeah, God's work still. And that got me, it, it, got, it gave me a calm, mm -hmm. you know, that it re resolved what would have become, what seemed to, was turning into anxiety for me. You know, and one verse that came to my mind is, I, mean, I don't know if you might have it in your presentation, but the Psalms 27. The Lord is my life, the Lord is my, life. Oh, my, my salvation, whom shall I fear? 
you know, the thing I love about the Lord is it doesn't matter where we are coming from. It really doesn't matter. If we put that burden on him, he's going to lift that burden. The thing is for us not to take it back, take it back from him. Okay, so God is saying here again, the anxious, an anxious, this is David speaking, brother of Solomon, maybe. An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. Mm. We're not here to put more anxiety on anybody. Our role as Christians is to lift people up, not to put them down to make them any more anxious than they already are. So again, I saw the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought for you, your role, your responsibility, unlike when you're lying in that ship, what can you do nothing? So, in this case, your job now is to go seek the Lord out and He will deliver. It doesn't matter what the situation is, God is a problem solver. Oh That's His name. Okay, at this point, I think we're going to take a break. And we, I have a nice summer time in life for us to just listen and enjoy. And then I'll be soon afterwards. <laughs>